authority. David Ward v. Warrington Borough Council Case No. Y05257F. Date, 30th day of May 2013. Page 2 of 14. Case Overview. What the government would like people to believe is that a procedural impropriety is an acceptable mistake that can be overlooked. But the truth is that it is a deliberate act of fraud and malfeasance in a public office. These are very serious crimes with criminal intent. The definition of fraud is a deliberate action to defraud where the victim of the crime is unaware having no knowledge of a situation or fact. This crime carries a penalty of 7 to 10 years incarceration and the latter, where there are multiple instances. 63.5 million people are subject to this crime every day on a multitude level, as it is now commonplace and is carried out by the largest and most ruthless criminal company in this country. This same company is also a public office with the enforcement to execute this crime, which is inclusive of but not limited to the Office of the Police, the Office of the Judiciary, Local Government, and Central Government. Independent bailiff and debt collection companies are also licensed by the same company. Malfeasance, misfeasance and nonfeasance are also very severe crimes with a period of incarceration of life in prison. Malfeasance is a deliberate act with criminal intent to defraud and ignorance is no defense. Malfeasance that has been defined by appellate courts in other jurisdictions as a wrongful act which the actor has no legal right to do an act for which there is no authority or warrant of law an act which a person ought not to do an act which is wholly wrongful and unlawful as that which an officer has no authority to do and is positively wrong or unlawful and is the unjust performance of some act which the party performing it has no legal right. Crimes of this nature cannot go unpunished. If crime goes unpunished then the criminal will undertake the action again and again. When the criminal is rewarded for the crimes by their peers and superiors, it then becomes difficult to know that a crime has been committed in the first place. However, it is everyone's obligation to be fully conversant with their actions and the consequences of their actions in every situation. I was just following orders or I was just doing my job is no excuse. When the full extent of these crimes is realized, it then becomes blatantly obvious that these crimes are deliberate and in full knowledge if not by the lower subordinates, but defiantly by the executive officers of the company. The cost to us to victims of these crimes has been estimated to be in the region of £4,037.25 trillion over the past 35 years. This is the cost to the people of this small country, which is far in excess by many times the global GDP. The simplicity of this case is very often overlooked as it involves a simple PCN, the penalty charge notice. It is important to note here that the appellant at a tribunal did not challenge the PCN or the Traffic Management Act 2004. What the appellant did was to remove from jurisdiction the very foundation to any claim made under any act or statute of parliament. All of which have the same legal dependency that has never been fulfilled in nearly 800 years. There are in excess of 8 million acts and statutes in this country alone and it is estimated that around 8,000 pieces of legislation are written and implemented every year, none of which can be acted upon without the legal authority to do so. To act upon these same acts and statutes without the legal authority to do so is malfeasance in a public office and fraud at the very least. This case was undertaken at a tribunal and therefore became a valid recognized due process that undeniably confirms this to be the facts of the matter. Page 3 of 14. Case Details This may appear to the reader to be a simple penalty charge notice, PCN, but closer observation of the details will conclusively show otherwise. This is the PCN issued by Warrington Borough Council, which clearly shows a claim is being made against the appellant's motorized road vehicle under the Traffic Management Act 2004. There is clearly no disclosure to the fact that there is no liability to pay, as the outcome will show. Page 4 of 14 The next document and physical evidence is the notice to owner dated April 8, 2013 from the same Warrington. 
Borough Council, which also quite clearly makes the claim that on March 5, 2013, there had been a violation of the Traffic Management Act 2004 Section 82 Page 5 of 14 Along with the opportunity to make representation as to why there is no liability. Please note that this is an unsigned notice and therefore it is not a legal document. The mitigating circumstances are that there has been a procedural impropriety, which is clearly an option as this is clearly stated on the notice to owner, third box from the bottom. So it is apparent that there is a deliberate procedural impropriety in place with the full knowledge of Warrington Borough Council otherwise this option would not be a part of the notice to owner. We also took the opportunity to utilize a second option that confirms that there is a procedural impropriety and that the order, which is alleged to have been contravened in relation to the vehicle is invalid, second box from the bottom. If not, then why would these possibilities be on this notice to owner if a procedural impropriety were not a possibility? We also took the opportunity to complete. Page 6 of 14 Section 3 of the notice to owner to clarify the procedural impropriety on a separate piece of paper as advocated by Warrington Borough Council as there was not enough space on the notice to owner provided. These presentations are as follows. Notice to Warrington Borough Council Notice of opportunity to withdraw Notice 2 Agent is Notice 2 Principal and Notice 2 Principal is Notice 2 Agent applies. Do not ignore this letter. Ignoring this letter will have legal consequences. Your reference, WL0118569 Dear Sirs, we do not know to whom to name as the recipient of this communication, as the sender failed in his her duty of care and did not sign the document sent to Mr. David Ward at his address. The action of not signing the document sent to Mr. David Ward legally means that no living person has taken legal responsibility for the content of the document on behalf of Warrington Borough Council, and the document couldn't be legally responded to. That very act of not signing the document renders the document void and therefore non-legal and unusable in law under current legislation. Strike 1. Deliberate Deception This document will now be kept on file as physical presentable evidence as it represent the criminal activities of the representatives of Warrington Borough Council whether they are aware of this transgression or not. Ignorance of the law is no defense and all of the representatives of Warrington Borough Council are now culpable under the current legislation because one individual failed to sign the document. This is a fact that must be understood. Strike 2. Ignorance of current legislation. The third grave error on the document is that the document is a notice to owner. Under current legislation the owner of any motorized vehicle is the DVLA Swansea SA 991 BA. This means that some imbecile at Warrington Borough Council has sent a notice to owner to the registered keeper and not the official owner. Strike 3. Document sent to the wrong address. We have not progressed beyond the first line yet, and we are falling around on the floor in a state of hysteria at the competence levels demonstrated by the representatives of Warrington Borough Council. Mr. David Ward is the official registered keeper not the owner. The very next line refers to the Traffic Management Act 2004. Now this is where events become really interesting because the act referred to is actually an act of HM Parliament and Governments PLC, a recognized unlimited corporation or an all-for-profit business. An act which is not law in the UK, it is not even referred to as law as it is an act of a corporation or an all-for-profit business, or policy, but it is not a law. Strike 4. Displays lack of understanding and competence regarding what is the difference between law and legislation. Acts and statutes of HM Parliament and Governments PLC can only be given force of law by the consent of the governed by those who have agreed to acts and statutes of HM Parliament and Governments PLC. Therefore, there is a mandatory legal requirement under current legislation that the governed must have given their consent legally, which can be physically presented as fact before the acts and statutes of HM Parliament and Governments PLC can be given force of law. 
145 Slater Street, Latchford, Warrington, WA 41DW, 16th of April 2013. Warrington Borough Council, Inquiries and Payments Office Level 6 Market Multi-Story Car Park Academy Way, Warrington, WA 12HN. Page 7 of 14. Not law, not enforceable. 63.5 million people in the UK have not legally entered into those agreements, 8 million plus, in full knowledge and understanding and of their own free will. An agreement which must be kept on the public record for the Acts and Statutes of HM Parliament and Government's PLC to be given an action which involves force or force of law. The answers to the questions are in the understanding of the words used to implement an act of force or law. The next item we come to is a demand for payment. A demand for payment without a signed bill is a direct contravention of the Bills of Exchange Act 1882. Strike 5. The Bills of Exchange Act of 1882 is based upon a pre-existing commercial contract or agreement. See Bills of Exchange Act of 1882. HTTP colon slash slash www.legislation.gov.uk slash ukpga slash vict slash four five hyphen four six slash six one HTTP colon slash slash www.legislation.gov.uk slash ukpga slash vict slash four five hyphen four six slash six one. Profiteering through deception is an act of fraud. Strike six. See Fraud Act 2006. HTTP slash slash www.legislation.government.uk slash UCTA slash 2006 slash 35 slash content slash slash www.legislation.government.uk slash UCTA slash 2006 slash 35 slash contents. Insisting or demanding payment without a pre existing commercial arrangement, which is based on presentable fact in the form of a Commercial agreement is an act of deception. Payment is a commercial activity. You have been served legal notice. Mr. David Ward has no recognizable legal means to respond to a demand for payment without a signed bill, which is based upon a pre-existing commercial contract or arrangement or agreement simply because no standing commercial contract or arrangement or agreement between Mr. David Ward and Warrington Borough Council exists. If Mr. David Ward was to willingly comply with the demand for payment without a commercially recognized bill, then Mr. David Ward would have knowingly given consent and conspired to a commercially fraudulent action. This in turn would make Mr. David Ward culpable under current regulation for that action. Mr. David Ward will not knowingly create that liability against him or create that culpability. The very presentation of the document that we are responding to from Warrington Borough Council, which is also a document that will be kept on file for future presentation as physical evidence, which is presentable physical evidence and a list of transgressions against the currently held legislation. This same document supplied by Warrington Borough Council recognizes that there may be, or has been, a procedural impropriety by the enforcement authority. This is the only saving grace on this document, which allows for honorable withdrawal of the proceedings implemented illegally by the Enforcement Authority. This document is representation as to the procedural impropriety by the Enforcement Authority and as stated at the outset of the document, gives an opportunity to withdraw due to the procedural impropriety by the Enforcement Authority. This process is also a matter of complying with current legislation without which Mr. David Ward would be unsuccessful if he were to pursue legal proceeding against the Enforcement Authority and or the members of Warrington Borough Council. As the opportunity to withdraw has now been presented to the Enforcement Authority and the members of Warrington Borough Council under a procedural impropriety by the Enforcement Authority, should the above-mentioned not take the opportunity to make an honorable withdrawal and confirm such in writing to Mr. David Ward. Then Mr. David Ward will be left with no other option in the future but to start legal proceedings against the Enforcement Authority and the members of Warrington Borough Council. The content of this document will be in the public domain in the next few days as there is no agreement in place that is legally binding of which to prevent this.
Mr. David Ward does not expect to be hearing from the Enforcement Authority and or the members of Warrington Borough Council again unless it is in the form of a written confirmation of withdrawal of proceedings. No further correspondence will be entered into regarding this matter. Without prejudice, i.e. all natural and unalienable rights reserved. Page 8 of 14. For and on behalf of David Ward. Mr. David Ward reserves the right to use force to defend himself, his family, and his family home, which he has an unalienable right to do so. Response to this notice should be forwarded within 10 days of receipt of this notice to the postal address known as 145 Slater Street, Latchford, Warrington WA 41DW No Assured Value, No Liability. No Errors and Omissions Accepted. All Rights Reserved. Without Recourse, non assumpsit You have been served legal notice. Warrington Borough Council decided at this point not to recognize the representation given or the requirement for Warrington Borough Council to present the legal and presentable consent of the governed, which is a mandatory duty for Warrington Borough Council to have the correct legal authority before acting under the Acts and Statutes of Parliament. It is also important to note that Warrington Borough Council did not at this point contest the presentations made. Page 9 of 14 there is no effective contest to the presentations made, so the presentations previously made in the correspondence stand as fact. At this point Warrington Borough Council invited Mr. David Ward to take Warrington Borough Council to a tribunal, and the outcome would be legal and binding on both parties. So we took advantage of this generous offer, and we included copy of all documents up to this point as physical evidence. This was the same process as before, with same presentation sent to Warrington Borough Council and accompanied by a letter to the adjudicator as follows. Dear Adjudicator, Please forgive the informality, as we have not been made aware of the name of the adjudicator to whom I address this letter. This is in response to Warrington Borough Council's decision to reject my challenge against the PCN. Clearly the PCN has been challenged by Mr. David Ward, however, that challenge has never been rebutted by Warrington Borough Council, as Warrington Borough Council have only repeated the grounds under which the PCN was raised. Copy under same cover that is highlighted. Also, a PCN is a penalty charge notice, and is such a notice of a penalty charge. A recognizable bill has not been raised and presented to Mr. David Ward completed and finalized with a wet ink signature. As the presentations made by Mr. David Ward were not addressed. Then the challenge made by Mr. David Ward still stands and the PCN is not valid or enforceable. Warrington Borough Council has made a demand for payment but has not presented Mr. David Ward with a bill which is recognized under the Bills of Exchange Act of 1882 which also must have a signature in wet ink. Warrington Borough Council cannot raise a bill because there is no commercial arrangement in place between Warrington Borough Council and Mr. David Ward under which a true bill can be raised. For Mr. David Ward to respond by paying without a bill signed in wet ink, then that would be a direct violation of the Bills of Exchange Act of 1882. In addition to this, as there is no commercial arrangement and bill presented, then this would also be a contravention of the Fraud Act of 2006. Mr. David Ward is not in the habit of knowingly conspiring to fraud. This action would also create a liability against Mr. David Ward. Warrington Borough has also listed in their rejection of presentations the Traffic Management Act 2004, S78, in support of their claim. The Acts and Statutes of HM Parliaments and Governments PLC can only be given force of law by the consent of the governed. What is mandatory in the first instance is the consent of the governed that is also presentable as fact. As the consent of the governed is not presentable as fact, then the Acts and Statutes of HM Parliaments and Governments PLC cannot be acted upon in any way that would cause loss to the governed. What is mandatory in this instance is the presentable agreements of 63.5 million governed to be in place before an act or statute can be acted upon. We fail to see how this is in support of the PCN presented to Mr. David Ward. We fail to see how listing the Traffic Management Act 2004, 
S-78 supports the claims made by Warrington Borough Council in any way other than to create obfuscation in attempt to confuse the mind. There are no agreements in place between the 220,000 residents of the Warrington Borough and Warrington Borough Council, which can be presented as fact complete with signatures in wet ink, which can be presented to support the claim of Warrington Borough Council in support of a demand for payment. Without violating the Bills of Exchange Act of 1882 and the Fraud Act of 2006 S2 Fraud by False Representation C. HTTP slash slash www.legislation.government.uk slash up the slash 2006 slash 35 slash section slash 2 HTTP slash slash www.legislation dot government uk slash up the slash 2006 slash 35 slash section slash 2 and section 4 part 2 a person may be regarded as having abused his position even though his conduct consisted of an omission rather than an act see http colon slash slash www dot legislation dot gov dot uk slash uk pga slash two zero zero six slash three five slash section slash four http colon slash slash www dot legislation dot gov dot uk slash uk pga slash two zero zero six slash three five slash section slash for an omission in the form of an omitted signature would constitute an act of fraud under s4 s2 of the fraud act 2006 so let us summarize regarding the grounds for appeal with reference to the form provided for appeal. 1. The alleged contravention did not occur. No contravention has occurred, because there are no agreements between the 220,000 members of the Warrington Borough and Warrington Borough Council, which can be legally presented as fact in support of the alleged contravention. Page 10 of 14. 2. There has been a procedural impropriety by the Council. The council did not respond to the challenge made by Mr. David Ward in a manner in which would make any sense or would constitute a rebuttal to the challenge. Warrington Borough Council are advocating to Mr. David Ward in their demand for payment, without a bill presented, a direct contravention of the Bills of Exchange Act 1882 and the Fraud Act 2006. 3. The traffic order that is alleged to have been contravened in relation to the vehicle concerned is invalid. The traffic order, that's a new approach, unfortunately it is not possible to find a listing for that, is illegal because there is no agreement between the parties, which is legally presentable as fact and signed in wet ink. You have got to love that word legal, legally blind, legal consent. All presentable as fact complete with a signature in wet ink, and without the signature in wet ink on a legal document in the form of an agreement, then it is not legal, or is illegal, and therefore not lawful. You have to love the word legal. Need we continue? It is obvious at this point that there is no one at Warrington Borough Council that is capable of understanding the challenge made by Mr. David Ward, or capable of responding, therefore an adjudicator becomes necessary. There is only one outcome to this tribunal, where the adjudicator is a recognized lawyer, and is independent of the council. A challenge has been made and has not been effectively rebutted by Warrington Borough Council. The action of demanding payment, without the presentation of a lawful legal bill, which is subject to the Bills of Exchange Act of 1882, and signed in wet ink cannot be responded to in the manner expected by Warrington Borough Council, without a second transgression, against the Fraud Act of 2006. Regardless of the legislation or policies of Warrington Borough Council or HM Parliaments and Governments PLC, any commercial activity would constitute an act of fraud without the commercial agreements in place beforehand. The continued activities where demands for payment are made without observing the Bills of Exchange Act 1882 and a recognized bill is presented complete with wet ink signature is a continued procedural impropriety by the Council and the members of Warrington Borough Council are culpable in law for their actions. There can only be one outcome to this tribunal, which is acceptable under current legislation. Warrington Borough Council will find in favor of the appellant Mr. David Ward, and not in favor of continued transgressions against current legislation that outcome.
In the document provided outlining procedure to make presentations in this tribunal process, there is a section concerning costs in favor of the appellant, where a party has behaved wholly unreasonable. We have taken a considerable amount of time and energy responding to Warrington Borough Council when making representation and in preparation for this tribunal. It is not without reason that a consideration could be expected. This would also serve to enforce the decision made by the adjudicator in this tribunal. If the adjudicator is truly an independent and an honorable individual, then a consideration is in order. Mr. David Ward also notes that as this tribunal is informal, then it is also recognized as not legally binding regardless of the findings of the adjudicator. We would also like a response in writing from the adjudicator to relay the outcome of this tribunal conveying the reasons for the adjudicator's decisions. For and on behalf of Mr. David Ward. Without prejudice, i.e. all natural and unalienable rights reserved. Mr. David Ward reserves the right to use force to defend himself, his family, and his family home, which is his unalienable right to do so. No assured value, no liability. Errors and omissions accepted. All rights reserved. Without recourse, non assumpsit Page 11 of 14. There are addition changes in international law that the adjudicator may not be aware of at this time. Please consider the following that will also has some bearing on this tribunal. The results from the tribunal are as follows. Decision cover letter, appellant, 1249270-1.pdf. Clearly this is a tribunal, and as such recognized due process, which is legal and binding on both parties. In addition to this there was the adjudicator's decision. Adjudicator decision 1249267.pdf. Page 12 of 14. Page 13 of 14. Appeal allowed on the ground that the council does not contest the appeal. The council has decided not to contest this appeal. Warrington Borough Council cannot contest the appeal. There is a mandatory requirement for Warrington Borough Council to present as physical evidence and factual foundation for the claim, which is the legally signed on, and for the public record consent of the governed. This is the legal authority that Warrington Borough Council would have to present as physical evidence and foundation for their claim to allow this claim to have any legal substance in presentable fact. He who makes the claim must also provide the foundation and the physical proof of that claim otherwise the moon could be made from cream cheese just because Warrington Borough Council claim this is so. Without this physical evidence then the claim is fraudulent. Hence a crime is committed by Warrington Borough Council and that crime is fraud not a procedural impropriety or a mistake. Also, there is a second crime. This second crime is malfeasance in a public office. A clear and intended action to extort funds where there is no legal authority to do so. The adjudicator has therefore directed that the appeal is allowed without consideration of any evidence or the merits of the case. Clearly there are merits of the case that have been presented here. The appellant is not liable to pay. Case No. WI 05257F dated 30th day of May 2013. There is also confirmation of this fact from Warrington Borough Council and signed in wet ink by an officer of the state, Scott Clark dated 29th of May 2013. Page 14 of 14. Due to the unanticipated shortage of parking services staff, Warrington Borough Council has no alternative except to exercise our discretion and cancel the above penalty charge notice. This is a very interesting choice of words that are obfuscator in nature. Warrington Borough Council will never be able to provide staff, which can provide the legal consent of the governed, because for the past 800 years the governed have never once been so much as asked to provide the legal consent of the governed on and for the public record. Warrington Borough Council or its parking services staff cannot provide something that does not exist and is of no physical substance for the foundation to the claim. Warrington Borough Council has no alternative except to exercise their discretion. As there is no legal consent of the governed then Warrington Borough Council does not have any authority or discretion to exercise. 
This also applies to HM Parliaments and Government PLC, the parent company. Underscore 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 Summary It is apparent that the ramifications of this case authority are huge and not transparent at first glance. Consider the following. A license is a permission to undertake an action that would otherwise be illegal. HP Parliaments and Governments PLC clearly do not have the legal authority to issue any form of license without the legal and physically presentable signed in wet ink consent of the governed. Also, HM, Parliaments and Governments PLC do not have the legal authority to determine that an action is illegal without the legal and signed consent of the governed physically on and for the public record. There is no physical record of the fact. 63.5 million people have not signed the consent of the governed. 63.5 million people have never once been asked and have never once signed the consent of the governed, and as the office of parliament is only a four-year term of office, then there must be this signed legal document every four years on and for the public record. All forms of tax, VAT, duty, council tax etc. is illegal and constitutes fraud and malfeasance in a public office without this legal dependency being fulfilled. The enforcement of these acts and statutes by the police, the local authority, the judiciary, and government licensed bailiffs are also illegal and constitutes malfeasance without this legal authority to do so. It is a known fact and this has been documented by chartered accountants that the populace pay all manner of tax to the tune of 85% in the pound. Sometimes where fuel is concerned this is as much as 92% in the pound. The argument has been made that it is necessary to pay tax to pay for the services that we need such as police, ambulance services, and so on. Then it can also be argued that these people who provide these services should not pay any form of tax. They should live a tax-free life. This is not in evidence. In fact the contrary is true. It would also be accurate to argue that the 15% that the populace actually gets to keep what they pay for all the services inclusive. People provide services not government. This would be an accurate assessment of the available facts. There is no valid reason to pay tax at all, and the cost of living would drop by 85% at a minimum. Do the maths. All the public officials are also victims of this crime, including the police, ambulance, paramedic, teachers and so on. In fact there is not an instance where there is not a victim of this crime. The ramifications span well beyond the content of this case authority undertaken by recognized due process at tribunal.